Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV in English with my bad German accent and please excuse it. Well, I'm here in Spain today, in northern Spain, and I have shorts with me and t-shirts, but I tell you it's freezing. But doesn't really matter because we're here to drive a car and that's the car I want to present to you today. BMW invited us to drive the 4 Series Grand Coupe. And I'm saying coupe and not cube again. You might have seen our M4 coupe video. And I'm t I told you I'm a rather Mercedes guy than a BMW guy. And I tell you, I get confused. You know, I was thinking two doors means four series, while four doors means three series. And now we have a coupe with four doors and it's a four series and not a C-series. I, I just get messed up. Anyhow, the experts from you know the 4 Series is a little bit wider, slightly, has a slightly, slightly different front, and uh, the 3 Series is a little bit taller. The dimensions of the Coupe and the Grand Coupe are pretty much the same, but the designers put the roof a little bit more to the back, you have like uh, 11 centimeters more of space to the back, which means a little bit more room for the passengers in the back, a little bit more headroom. And you remember how I managed to climb in the M4 coupe, which was no fun. I will show you in a bit, it's more easy to get in the Grand Coupe. BMW provided us this beautiful blue um, 428i and it has a two liter four cylinder twin power turbo engine uh, which uh, has 245 horsepower and uh, maximum torque of 350 newton meters. Don't get too excited uh, watching the front because we have the M package here which is optional. So this aggressive or at least sporty uh, front bumper is part of the um, M package and it comes with uh, special uh, alloy wheels in 19 inch, a little M badge at the sides, a rear bumper in a more sporty way and an M steering wheel. Why would anyone buy a Grand Coupe? Well, you know, I guess it's for persons like me. I don't like a sedan too much, it's not sporty enough for me. But then I have two kids and uh, they really don't like climbing in the back, you know. So they prefer cars with four doors. And here we are, we have a four, we have a four door coupe. And um, the Grand Coupe comes with frameless doors, not only in the front, as well in the back and I really like this. Um, unlike the normal coupe, the Grand Coupe has a different uh, trunk. You see the whole back is flipping upwards and uh, you can reach the trunk much easier this way. Well, I might say they call it Grand Coupe for a reason, because they have 35 liters more space in the trunk than the regular cube or the two-door cube. And uh, so we come to 480 liters. And because I hate those figures, I will show you what we got in here. Not only my new um, and beloved tripod case but always uh, as well a bag and two suitcases fit easily in here. I'm growing old, well I'm an old guy actually so I have problems lifting stuff high uh, but here it's pretty easy you just have 64 centimeters that you have to lift it up the luggage and then about 15 centimeters down. If you need to have more space in the trunk, you can flip the back seats. First you have to remove this little piece here, which is easy done. And then you can flip the back seats. Well, normally you can. And you already might see it here. It's like this 40-20-40 thing. So you're, you're very flexible. And even if you have to load long stuff, you can just flip the middle and still have four people sit there easy like if you go skiing. Once you flipped all the seats you have space for uh, 1300 liters of luggage 
and uh, be aware the surface is not really uh, plain so it goes up here a little bit um, well we measured the whole thing you have or you can you can load stuff up to 175 centimeters in here in length and that's about 90 centimeters here when i was a kid a trunk was a trunk you know you put stuff in there nowadays you have all this fancy stuff like uh, they put rubber bands here so you can you know adjust something you have a 12 volt outlet something where you can put bags so they don't fall around another fancy net so things don't scoot around there's a trap a little back door some more space in here and uh, of course there's hooks to to tie up some stuff okay um bmw they offer something fancy once you have the key in your pocket all you have to do is like kick here well i said all you have to do is like kick here All you have to do is kick here. Well, all you have to do is kick somewhere here. I have the key. Kick. Oh well. Wieso geht denn das nicht? Well, you have to kick at a certain point at least and then the uh, door closes all by itself so if you have luggage and you come to the car you have the key in your pocket you're carrying something you all you have to do is kick and it opens wow it's magic and once you have put all in there all you have to do is kick again and it closes amazing that's magic isn't it so here's the proof i'm getting into the back of the 4 series Grand Coupe and wow this is easy remember how I got in the um, M2 Coupe that's a big big difference uh, besides that I have the same leg room of course there's not more leg room but that's really nice the uh, driver's seat is for a person of uh, 6 inch I guess and I'm 5'11", so it's easy sitting here. The headspace is a little bit dif uh, yeah, difficult. It's limited. If I lean back, my head is bumping to the ceiling. But if I sit like easy normally, uh, no in a normal way, it's, it's okay. Besides that, uh, you might remember the M4 coupe didn't have much to show in the back. Here we have a little uh, space compartment where I can put stuff. On the back of the seats we have little nets. Um, I even have um, a heated seat, at least uh, two seats are heated. I have something where I can put my jacket. And of course, very missed in the to uh, um, and in the normal coupe I have an armrest which even offers a cup holder all right by the way I have reading lights for the back as well and um, let me hold this here no jokes please um, for buckle up I have more space like you know people who eat more than I do can still buckle up in a good way I guess so uh, sitting in the back is quite comfy I, I wouldn't complain you know even driving a longer distance but here's something my kids would really hate if you don't roll down the windows here say stop and I was like go down go down but they're not going any farther it's a little more a little bit more than half they roll down but then they stop okay it's because of the shape you know we have small doors and they can't go all the way down but my kid wouldn't like this at all and to be honest I don't like it either I want to of course drive with this car but uh, let me show you around inside a little bit more I will hop on the driver's seat and please come in I will show you how it feels and um, I'm telling you it feels good it really feels nice to, to get in this uh, 4 series Grand Coupe even if it's not the M4 
um, maybe there will be an M4 Grand Coupe. Uh, we don't know yet. Well, I can adjust the steering wheel manually and I find it really easy to get the right position for the steering wheel as well as for the nice leather seats uh, which you can adjust electrically and you have a memory function of course and they're heated and all that so when I sit here I have plenty of um, headroom but my mate I'm here with my colleague she's uh, six feet tall and she was like bumping here right at this uh, point with her head so she probably has to go more more down with the seat um, the whole uh, feeling of the car the uh, well really beautiful M steering wheel with this leather coat um, feels really nice and the material as well yeah it is plastic but it feels like good plastic at least and I really like BMW I really like you for facing this whole middle part towards me as a driver. We have a header display in here as well, same uh, we had in the um, M4 Coupe. And it's really crisp and good and I like the, the gorgeous that I can read easily. And we even have an ambient light in here which I can't show you right now because it's just too bright. Even you know the clouds tell me that it's gonna rain. And you can either, either have it in uh, this BMW orange or you can switch it into a bright light white. And um, now it's, it's really a nice ride, I confess. It's not a Mercedes, but it's a really, really nice ride. We have um, some compartments where we can store stuff in the uh, door panels. There's enough space for a little bottle at least, and even you know your wallet and some CDs or warning vests or whatever. Um, we have two cup holders here in the front. So this bottle won't fit in here. And if you have smaller bottles, you will have uh, problems too because they're not just little uh, things that help you adjust uh, the bottles. If you don't like cup holders, well, if you're not American, um, you can even put this little tray in here and put uh, some, some change or whatever on here and it has a surface so the stuff won't fall around. Well, I'm a smoker, I have to confess, but there's no ashtray in the front here but at least a 12 volt outlet and under the armrest which is really nice and big you find nothing more than connectivity for the infotainment system we have an USB port here in Auxin and um, BMW supplied this car with an iPhone to show various stuff with the infotainment system the glove compartment is not really well not what I would call big but at least well you know the stuff fits in there that needs to go in there we have of course um, sun shades with makeup mirrors that are illuminated with LED lights and we have reading lights on both sides as well as big lights that helps you get in the car while it's dark okay uh, enough talking uh, let me see I got the key and let me hit the start button and take you for a ride now it's just a couple of days ago when I was uh, able to drive the M4 coupe uh, I was kind of worried that I get disappointed by this engine 245 horsepower but to be honest, I'm just more than pleased. I think it's very much about this what uh, BMW calls Fahrerlebnisschalter. This little switch right here where you can choose the different driving modes. At least to me, uh, those driving modes really please my needs. I have comfort for just cruising around, hanging in the car, just driving a little bit, maybe enjoying uh, the, the music from the infotainment system, which I like by the way, and the Harman Kardon sound system, which I recommend, it does a good job, it's really, it's not high end, but it's upper class at least. Then if you want to, you know, take it a little bit, you, know, you, you want to go a little bit faster, you want to, you know, enjoy the curves and all that, you just go in sport 
and if you really want to rock and roll you just you know put it in sport plus and you know it uh, disables at least a little bit the uh, stability program the ESP and so if you're man enough you know you can you know go fast on the curves and let the back slide a little bit but uh, that's nothing we do here of course we just you know German kind of boring but the car is able to do it and that's the point it's not only the engine that gets affected by the switch you know it's a steering as well so while you're cruising in comfort the uh, steering is all easy and when you put it in sport sport plus it gets pretty direct which is really um, gives you good feedback and there's, there's really nothing to complain I mean I, I kind of unpleasant with myself right now because me Mercedes guy another BMW and me you know bragging and telling you what a nice ride but it is there's nothing to complain we're not sure about the mileage we did on our test drive seems a little bit too high for me from how we drove it says like uh, 12.7 liters on um, 100 kilometers which seems to be too much for me um, but overall the brakes work fine you know and um, I really enjoy the suspension it's never too hard it's always kind of comfortable but when in sport or sport plus it gives you still a really good feedback about the car and the road I really enjoy this we have like various assist systems I don't want to bore you about blind spot warning or you know lane keeping assist um, but there's something new in the car and uh, that's kind of neat the um, transmission the automatic transmission that is uh, done by ZF is kind of hooked up to the navigation system to the GPS so um, the transmission knows what speed limit you have and uh, in which um, sort of landscape you're driving so it can adjust uh, shifting to the environment and that's you know another step to um, autonomous driving that's neat I can't say that I really you know notice this while driving but the twist you know that, that's kind of neat overall I can say I really enjoyed this test drive it's a very pleasant car besides I like coupes and it's a four-door coupe makes me you know feel very tempted to think a little bit more about this car here right now uh, if you wonder about pricing uh, forgive me I don't know and the best thing is this car is probably sold wo worldwide and you better ask your local dealer about the pricing because we have different differences in the market especially when it comes to options and packages well uh, that's it for now I hope you enjoyed this little clip and if you might wonder about some of the pictures you saw in the clip I don't have uh, painted fingernails <laughs> that's my beautiful and wonderful colleague Sarah and you might know her from Fastlane Daily because she's doing reviews for Fastlane Daily well if you like Fastlane Daily or not uh, I hope you liked this clip please give us a like if you haven't done so far just subscribe if you have any questions about this baby just ask in the comments and we try to answer I'll see you soon goodbye bye bye BMW invited us and they are giving us the opportunity to drive the new BMW M4 Grand Coupe.